Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor, and today we've got the real world highway fuel economy and range test on the 2023 Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid. In today's test, we're gonna head out on the highway and drive until the battery is depleted and then continue on to get a realistic fuel economy number for this mid-size crossover. Taking a quick look at it here, it's all charged up. We're gonna do a real world sort of test with this car. So no sort of preconditioning, nothing like that. We're just gonna make it as though you were to head out on the car and do driving in, in your normal life, see how far it'll go. The Outlander comes in two flavors, this plug-in hybrid model and then a normal gasoline model. It has a shared architecture with the Nissan Rogue, but it's a little bit more practical in the sense that it does have a third row, even though it's a really tight third row seat. If you do want to see more on the Outlander or the Outlander plug-in here, check the link in the description. We've got a DM review, a review of the Bose sound test, as well as a lot of coverage on the normal gasoline model. So without any further ado, let's get this thing unplugged and get rolling. Pop out the grizzly charger. Without actually firing up the engine or powertrain, let's see what we got here. Battery is all charged. So to start this test, we're actually gonna go into EV charge mode. That should fire up the engine here any second since the car has started. I don't know when. <laughs> You'd think it would start pretty soon. Uh, turn that heated seat off. And then we're gonna drive in EV charge, which should keep our battery charged up get to the gas station, fill it up with fuel, and then head out and test the EV range on the highway and the fuel economy. Again, don't know why the engine's not going if we're in EV charge mode. It does say we have 42 miles of electric range. A few things to note for today, outside temperature is 46 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a little early in the morning, so that should heat up a little as we continue to drive. Our tire pressures have been set to their door placard, 36 PSI, cold. And we're gonna run the climate control at 73 degrees auto. Did the same test with the Volvo S60 recharge last week, and when I put that car in charge mode, it turned the engine on <laughs> when I got going so that it would save the battery. This still hasn't fired up the engine. I don't quite understand why. Maybe the battery's just too full and it wants to drain it down a little bit for efficiency. 5.590 gallons going in for our first fill. All right, we're charged up, we're gassed up. We're gonna make sure we're in EV mode here. Start the motor, GPS is reset. We're ready to go. We do have a multitude of drive modes here in the Outlander plug-in. What do we got? Um, oh, EV mode priority was already canceled. Why? Why? I, I wanna drive as an electric vehicle. I don't need the engine right now. It's a plug-in hybrid. Okay, back in EV mode, I believe. <laughs> anyway, a lot of drive modes. We got, oh, it's because I switched, I switched the drive mode into power. I, that would be nice if it gave me a little notification there. But we, you take my word for it, we got a lot of drive modes. Eco, normal, tarmac, snow, off-road, a whole bunch. We're doing this test in eco. getting up to the highway here. The goal of this test isn't to try to see what the best possible mileage for this car is. I recognize that driving slower would get better mileage and not using as much climate control, but we wanna see what sort of numbers you can realistically expect if you just wanna use this car normally here in the real world. So in order to test that, we're getting up to highway speeds here at a reasonable pace, and we're gonna set our cruise control at a GPS indicated 72 miles per hour. That should allow us to average 70 over the whole test. Doing it all. I don't. I actually don't know if our engines. It sounds like our engines running. I don't know why. I chose EV mode, but it sounds like our engine is running. Let's switch over to our. Yep. Gasoline motor's running. Don't know why. <laughs> uh, looks like we're all battery now, so maybe it's shut down. Getting up to speed. Looks like our speedometer is actually reading a little bit low. Kind of disappointing. So we're gonna have to set in at about 71 miles per hour. Unfortunately, we're getting going with a little bit of traffic this morning. So I'm having trouble getting up to full speed since people don't seem too interested in traveling the speed limit. There we go, about 70 miles per hour on the cars. The speedometer's giving us about 72 on the GPS. That's where we're gonna settle in. Some more highway impressions for you after we get driving a little bit. It's kind of hard to tell with this concrete highway as well as all the traffic around us, but should have a better idea of what this thing's like as we're going. We do have a 
active lane keeping system, so we'll be able to test that out, see how well that works. And we're gonna try to go out and then turn around about halfway through our EV charge. We're down to 34 miles already after two and a half miles driven, so maybe about 15, 16 miles or so, we'll turn around, try to negate the effects of wind and elevation and catch back up with you. Okay. Now, as we first set out on the EV portion of this range test, the car's range was tanking. It dropped from about 37, 38 miles estimated when we left, which is the EPA estimated number for this car, 38 miles of EV only range. That's combined driving. And it fell all the way to its lowest point where it looks like we'd get about 28 to 29 miles of electric range. And then we turned around, coming back, I think we're kind of more with the wind this time and a little bit more downhill elevation. So at this point, we've done 29 miles as we've got two miles left of range. So just over 30 miles is probably about what we can expect. Again, quite a bit lower. It's a very different result from that Volvo we tested last week where it did a few miles better than its EPA estimated range at highway speeds. This one's gonna do a good five to eight miles worse than its EPA range. Not awful, I suppose, for a mid-size crossover like this, but just something to remember that when you're going higher speeds like this, the exponential nature of wind resistance against uh, against efficiency here is it's rough with these bigger vehicles. So we've got one mile left. We've done 2.2 miles per kilowatt hour. Let's bring up the screen now so that we can watch our energy flow. It looks like we're probably gonna get off the highway here before the engine kicks in. So much like the Volvo test last week, it's probably gonna be on the acceleration back onto the highway where we finally kick it. Let's see what we can do. Zero miles left. Engine should be coming on any moment. Now we're dash, dash, dash. And there we go, canceled at 31.9. So 30 miles is gonna be definitely a safe number for you. Maybe at highway speeds here, you eke out an extra one mile, maybe two, depending on how you're driving. But disappointing not to really get close from a percentage standpoint to our EPA number. Would have liked to see at least 35 or so there. But either way, time to continue on and see if we can get the 27 miles per gallon on gas only that this, uh, that the EPA as you'll get in this car. Coming into the end of the highway fuel economy portion of the range test here on the Outlander plug-in hybrid. 25 MPG according to the vehicle's trip computer. Two miles per gallon below EPA, but given the heavy rain that we've been driving in, I don't think that's too bad of a number. I mean, I think we could probably get 26 if we were running in perfectly ideal situations, but we have been able to average a pretty good speed, so. Uh, given that this is a, a larger size mid-row crossover, uh, mid-size crossover, maybe not too bad of a number, but certainly not something particularly fuel efficient if that's what you were expecting. We are going to get it back to the pump, throw in the rest of the fuel tank here and, and see what we get for our final number. But that coupled along with the uh, much lower than EPA range figure, I don't know, something to keep in mind. Other highway observations, I've had a lot of weird uh, 
clunkiness when I'm coming off of adaptive cruise control and then back onto the throttle, canceling things and then getting back on the accelerator. In terms of seat comfort and road noise, it seems pretty average. Also a lot of beeps every time you change lanes and the highway lane tracing picks back up, then it, it beeps at you. And also a weird thing where when the lane departure warning kicks in, it slows the vehicle down. Something that, that kind of takes you by surprise, if you will. We ended up putting in 3.936 gallons, so 101 miles divided by 3.936. It's given us 25.4 miles per gallon, almost exactly what the car's readout was. Given the rainy conditions of the road, I'm gonna give the benefit of the doubt to the car, bump it up to 26 MPG here on the highway. So one mile per gallon below EPA, but still an okay figure for a three row crossover. Still maybe not that impressive for a hybrid, but being able to do about 30 miles of that on electric only definitely helps. We have an 11.3 gallon fuel tank in here, so 11.3 gallons times 26 miles, is that what I said, 26? Yeah, 26 miles per gallon is giving you an effective highway cruising range of only 290 miles on gasoline. If you add in the 30 miles leaving your house all charged up, you'd be able to get about 320 miles cruising on the highway here in the Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV. That's not super ideal. If you were gonna take a long road trip with this, you wouldn't be charging up, you'd just be running on gas. You'd be stopping fairly regularly. So certainly something to keep in mind. Um, maybe if you're the right type of user for this sort of car, then it could be appealing to you. But with some of the competitors out there like the RAV4 Prime, the new Mazda CX-90 coming out, there are definitely other options to consider. So thank you all so much for watching. If you do want to see more on the Outlander PHEV, check the link in the description, and we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, drive on. Mm -hmm.